we see the world in chaos. Birds fly above as a huge lightning bolt strikes, causing a loud crash. Animals feast on the remains of zombies lying on the ground, while the ones still alive are in an advanced state of mutation. Someone spits on the ground, saying, Damn, that traitor dared to deceive me. Then we see our protagonist, all battered, standing in a fighting stance. A mutant zombie rushes towards him, preparing to attack. I never thought I'd end up dying at the hands of a companion. I'm not fit to live in this insane, apocalyptic world. The zombie leaps at him to attack. That's when we meet our protagonist. My name is Ye Jong Min, someone who's always thought about the apocalypse. But right now, I'm about to die. How did this happen? I'll tell you. Ten years ago, the world changed. 90% of all living beings were infected and turned into terrifying monsters. Countless roulettes descended from the sky. Over time, people discovered crystals in the zombies' heads, which could be used to spin the roulette and obtain unimaginable items. There are various types of items and resources, like weapons and even genetic medicines that allow someone to awaken supernatural abilities. Because of this, survivors fought for the roulette. The entire world turned into a brutal and violent survival game. And I, with the intent to stay alive, could only accept and obey. To survive, I threw away my principles as a human. After 10 years of training and hard work, I finally secured a place in the team. I thought my future would be bright and get better. I thought if I worked hard, I could live, and it should have been like that. Ah, uh, I never imagined that in the end I'd die by a companion's hand. And so we see our protagonist being struck. This is where my game ends. Suddenly, he wakes up, lying next to a girl. Am I dreaming? Hadn't she died long ago? He starts to get up while still with her. Is this my house? The house I lived in ten years ago before the apocalypse? I thought I... Have I been reborn? Then he looks at some kind of object that shows the year. Year 2020, September 10th. Isn't that the date the apocalypse broke out? That hell. Do I have to live through that again? Then memories of all the zombies flash before him. No, wait. Being reborn means a chance to change everything. My precious ten years of experience in the apocalypse are the most powerful weapon. I need to live. He starts getting up and putting on his shirt. Meanwhile, the girl starts waking up and notices he's already up. She starts calling him by name asking where he's going. She keeps calling him as he opens a drawer and is lost in thought, saying, This is the inheritance my parents left me. I didn't have the courage to use it in my past life, but now I have to use it. Once the apocalypse comes, money will be worthless. Then she calls his attention again. Ye Jong Min, I'm asking you a question. Where are you going? He drops his backpack on the floor. I already knew. You and Kim Jong are together. You're just acting out of pity, right? She is surprised that he knows her secret. Jong Min, what are you talking about? He begins to explain. In my past life, when the apocalypse happened, I did everything to protect this girl. But she chose to leave me, and chose that Kim Jong. Then it cuts back to her. Ye Jong Min, speak clearly. What right do you have to ridicule me and Kim Jong? You're just jealous because he's stronger and more handsome. You're just a clown. Without expressing any reaction, he says, Chi Chi, because of our past, I'll give you one last warning. Be careful with Kim Jong. He's not someone you should choose as a companion. When he trades you for... Then he remembers the past, when she was traded for three canned goods. Even if I tell you, you wouldn't believe me. This is all I can do. I have no time to waste with her. I have more important things to do. Then she continues shouting, I was the one who rejected you first, Ye Jong Min. With the apocalypse coming, I need to prepare medicine, food, and equipment. Then we cut to outside, where he tells the driver to take him to the nearest hospital as fast as possible. The driver tells him to fasten his seatbelt because he's going to speed up. He then arrives at the hospital and starts gathering the medicines. First, the most important important resource is medicine. Suddenly, a nurse appears. You, who are you? Noticing her, he starts running, and she keeps shouting that he came there to steal. He says he left some money on the table. These medicines are rare resources in an apocalypse. There's an unexpected use for them. Let's move on to the next spot. Then he goes to an outdoor equipment store and meets the old man. He tries on some shoes and finishes by tying them. Then the shopkeeper comes up behind him, saying that all his products are ready and asks for the method of payment. He looks at him and hands him a card. Wait, isn't this machete the same one I used in my past life? And the quality seems excellent. This cheap price is totally worth it. As he leaves, the shopkeeper calls him a stupid sheep, saying that knife was sold at ten times the normal price. We then see the taxi speeding again, and our protagonist says, Get to the High Day Mansion in five minutes and I'll pay you 300 Wayne extra. The driver, excited by the news, says, Okay, hold on tight. He speeds up even more, almost running someone over. All set. 
Now all that's left is the roulette. The apocalypse roulette, also known as the trade roulette, is the first and only source of survival resources. Water, food, equipment, even special abilities, all can be obtained by spinning the roulette. I need to be the first. According to my memory, the first apocalypse roulette should be around here. He approaches near a condominium, and the security guard comes over. Hey, taxis are not allowed in this area. While he tries to stop him, our protagonist tells the driver, keep going, if there's any problem, I'll take responsibility. And the driver says, okay, okay. So he accelerates into the area while the guard moves aside to avoid being run over. Headquarters, there's a taxi entering the area, requesting reinforcements. Then he gets close to a house and says, Sir, stop here and keep going. Remember to run to a place with few people. And the driver confirms, thanking him and saying, Okay. He gets out of the car and stares at the place he's about to enter. The guards approach again, pointing their batons at him. A taxi destroyed our security barrier. You still think you can run away? The protagonist looked back and he keeps saying, Kid, are you listening to me? Don't play dumb. Then he starts pointing at a spot and says, Look over there. The guard, looking, look at what? Then suddenly, a massive spaceship starts to appear. The guard, realizing it, starts to say, what is that? The apocalypse is coming, just like 10 years ago. Why did they leave the roulette and make people fight? If history repeats itself, if this survival game continues, then this time, I must seize this opportunity and become strong. I won't waste this new chance I received. The spaceship continues flying. The name of this ship is the Golden St. Louis Spaceship. It keeps flying in the sky, while our protagonist and the guards stay below, just observing. Suddenly, Suddenly, the guards start taking pictures. Are they filming a movie? Is it a special effect? The other guards start saying, What the hell is this? Our protagonist, already anxious, starts saying, So soon. The Golden St. Louis spaceship is about to start the attack. The attack will last five minutes. Knowing this, he starts rushing towards the place he wanted to go. Already tired, he approaches and says, In five minutes, the world will turn into hell. He rings the doorbell, and someone answers, Who is it? Delivery. The first set of apocalypse rules roulettes will appear when the spaceship finishes its attack. The roulette will descend. The door opens, and realizing this, he enters the house. Then he hears someone speaking. Hey, aren't you the delivery guy? Who are you? Then we see the house's resident approaching. Get out, or I'll call the police. He looks at her expressionlessly and says, this woman has no combat abilities. Then she asks, what are you planning? As soon as she finishes speaking, a massive explosion occurs outside, shaking everything. Our protagonist, noticing this, says, the attack has begun. Huge capsules start descending from the sky like meteors, crashing into everything in their path. Not even the cars escape. People scream in terror, wondering what's happening. We then see that the capsule is enormous. It begins to open, releasing a green gas. The first person caught by it is standing right in front. Hey, are you okay? The mutation starts, and he begins to scream. Our protagonist, observing from the house, hears people crying for help. The resident, noticing the commotion asks, what's happening outside? There are so many people screaming. Our protagonist realizes something and she continues, if you don't leave, I'll call security. He remembers something and says, oh right, it's in the kitchen. He starts running and she says, hey, you. They approach something that's glowing and she comes running saying, hey, are you deaf? Get out of here. Then we see the roulette he had mentioned. It's here, he says. If I had five grade one crystals, I could trade them all at once. Then he notices is something else. There are seven slots, he says, disappointed. Spinning this roulette requires seven grade one crystals, two more than usual. There must be something very valuable to redeem here. The woman, still confused, asks, why are you so sure of this? Why aren't you speaking? Then we see all the items the roulette could offer our protagonist, and he notices something. Luck card. She touches his shoulder and asks, what are you talking about? What's this roulette thing? What luck card? He looks back at her and says, luck card. A type of card that enhances special abilities. Didn't this woman turn into a zombie? That means she has some resistance to poison. Maybe she can become my assistant. He continues explaining, it can enhance your your five senses, physical strength, or even give you a pet. She waves her hand in disbelief. Stop joking around. Are you playing a game? Get a pet? Who would believe that? Listen, what? The screams outside have stopped. Yeah, now that you mention it. What happened out there? Stupid woman, are you going out to get yourself killed? She starts running, approaching the door. The security in this area is getting worse, letting all kinds of people in. As she opens the door, she screams as a zombie tries to enter. Terrified, the zombie grabs her 
and she ends up in a strange position, almost as if something else was happening. The zombie extends its long tongue. She tries to push the zombie away, crying out for someone to save her. We see the zombie's saliva flying. It's saliva! YouTube! She pushes its head away, scared, while it knocks her to the ground. Just as it does, a green blur swiftly passes by, and the zombie's head is disconnected from its body. When she realizes it, it's our protagonist, holding his machete. She's on the floor with green liquid on her face, looking exhausted. Our protagonist then grabs the zombie's head and extracts the crystal from it. She starts wiping herself off and says, he wants the crystal in the monster's head. This crystal looks similar to the one from the roulette. Could it be? Suddenly, two more zombies enter. Noticing this, she says, Two more appeared. He steps forward, protecting her. The zombies start running toward him, preparing to attack. His eyes glow and he begins attacking, making the zombies' heads fly off. Seeing this, she asks, how did you do that? She's impressed by the protagonist's ability. While she's on the ground, our protagonist observes the fallen zombies. She starts asking, who are you? He tells her his name, Yazomi, while putting away the machete. What's your name? He holds out his hand to her, and she says, my name is Mukshin Fei. When he hears her say Mukshin Fei, he's shocked. She thanks him, and he starts to remember. Mukshin Fei? That Mukshin Fei, the nine star ranked from the rumors ten years from now? It's her. She looks at him and asks, Yazomi, what are these things? He starts to explain. The earth was invaded, as you can see. Most people have turned into zombies. She's shocked and says, Invaded? Turned into zombies? He holds the zombie's head while saying, And I don't know who invaded earth, but a few people weren't affected by the invasion and didn't become zombies like you and me. And with that, he continues extracting the crystal from the zombie's head. She then asks, Terrified, So what do we do? Will the government or the military come to save us? While looking at the crystal, and tossing the head aside, he says, In just a few minutes, the government and the military will probably collapse. Outside, at this moment, is a zombie world. And we see all the zombies. She covers her mouth in shock. A zombie world? In his thoughts, he continues, This woman seems to be just a normal human. How did she become a nine star? If she can become one, she must have something special. Besides, I need an assistant. He starts walking and says, Come, let me tell you about the rules of survival in the zombie world. He approaches the roulette and begins to say, This roulette is called the Apocalypse Roulette. Most of the resources and equipment in the zombie world come from this roulette. If you want to spin the roulette and get an item from it, you need to fill these slots. She places her hand on the slot and says, This shape looks similar to the one you took from the zombie's head. Could it be? He then takes out the crystals and begins to place them. These are the gray zombie crystals. After filling them in, you'll be able to spin the roulette once. So you need to kill seven zombies to spin the roulette once, he explains. The higher the value of the roulette's reward, the more zombie crystals will be required. She looks at him and asks, so there are other roulettes like this one, each with different rewards? He says, this is just a grade one roulette. This woman, he calls her smart. She approaches and says, brother, how do you know all this? He's taken aback and tries to avoid her question. I can't tell her about being reborn. It's too difficult to explain. So he asks her if she wants to spin the roulette. She nods, saying, yes. Turning away, he says, I'm going to hunt some zombies. Close the door. Don't open it, no matter what happens. She takes note and starts to get scared, saying, hunt zombies? When we look outside, it's already crowded with zombies. One of the zombies notices him, but when he realizes it, it's too late. His blade disconnects its head while the other zombies just watch. He prepares to attack and quickly starts taking down the others, one by one. He jumps toward two zombies, kneeing one one in the head, and as it falls, he charges at the other, slicing it apart with his knife. Then, he begins extracting the crystal. While doing so, he hears someone crying for help. Then we see another woman running towards him, asking for help. She moves behind him as the zombies approach. He watches the zombies getting closer and quickly swings his knife, making the zombies fall to the ground. Another zombie comes at him, but he stabs it. The woman, already on the ground, watches as another zombie appears and begins to scream while approaching from behind. Realizing the zombie is coming from behind, he slashes its neck, 
making it drop like a stone. He observes and finishes off the last zombie. Brother yeah, you're amazing. You've obtained 11 zombie crystals. Counting the three from before, we can spin twice. Holding the crystals, he says, let's go. I'll let you have a reward. She clasps her hands in thanks. He approaches the roulette with her and the wheel begins to spin. The crystal in the roulette disappears. She wonders what they'll win while he hopes for medicine. Then, we see the roulette stop and canned food appears. She's surprised, saying, wow, we really got canned food. Frustrated, he says, are you serious, man? In the apocalypse, canned food is a valuable resource, but before he can finish, she opens the fridge, saying, while you were out, I organized the food at home. There's enough for us to eat for a long time. He, sitting on the ground, points to her, saying she should try this time because his luck is terrible. She looks at him happily and says, can I really try? She takes the crystal, and he watches, thinking, the future nine-star Mushin Fei, what will she get? She prepares to place the crystal. The seven crystals are inserted, and she stands before him just the way the audience likes. She notices the roulette beginning to spin. He says, each spin at the beginning of the apocalypse is crucial. It can quickly improve combat ability. I hope her luck is better than mine. When she sees the results, she says, I got this. He realizes, no way. She's puzzled about what it is. An elimination card. An elimination card? He looks at her, sweating, seeing how lucky she is. I never thought you'd win this. An elimination card, she asks. An elimination card? Is that good? He says, of course it is. Then we see the elimination card. When spinning the roulette, this elimination card can be used. It can eliminate one of the prizes. The eliminated prize will have no chance of being selected. Even though it might not be necessary now, it will be very useful in future spins when equipment or skills are needed. This type of elimination card is a divine item to increase the chances of getting other items. She holds the card saying, I never thought I could get this in the apocalypse roulette. He, sweating, says, has your luck always been this good? Well, when I used to drink often, I'd win another bottle. When I cracked open a prize egg, I always won the big prizes. In chosen boxes, I always got the limited edition first. When I played the lottery at supermarket events, I even won a live cow. He, realizing, says, you won a cow? She, all happy, and he, thoughtful, since you have a lucky physique, I'll make full use of your luck. Then we see the next day. She starts to say, are you already leaving in the morning? He says, yes, I'm going to collect crystals, but so early? And then she's already changed clothes, looking cuter, while our protagonist prepares to leave the house. He points, saying, my goal today is 100 crystals. She sweats, hearing this. This man is quite reliable. I can't just sit and do nothing at home. Good, we got two weapons in a row. She stretches out her hand with the crystals to him, saying, we can still spin once more. You can try. And he says, no, my luck is bad. No, no, thanks. Then she holds his hand and starts blowing on it. I passed some good luck to you. Hmm, don't do that, or the viewers will start shipping us. And he, embarrassed, says, okay, the items that have already been redeemed won't appear again. Now the roulette only has six types of rewards left. The chances of getting the hygiene improvement medicine are, suddenly she changes the subject, saying, we should use this elimination card to renew the cookie boxes. Then she spins the roulette with the card, and both of them realize it's too late. She clasps her hands and begins to say, ah, I really didn't want to use this excuse. And he puts his hand on his face, saying, no, it's okay, relax. They start placing it again. Now we have a 20% chance of obtaining a hygiene improvement medicine. It's worth a try. The roulette starts spinning, and the two begin to plead for it to land on what they want. Then their luck kicks in, and it lands on what they want. Great, we managed to obtain it. Beginner body enhancement medicine, capable of greatly developing the user's physique, and improving improving close combat skills by at least three times. As he looked at it, he thought, in the early battle phase, this is the most important thing. She looks at him and says, after you use this, your body will be immediately enhanced. He looks at her, saying, no, don't be in such a hurry. Let me show you something interesting. He begins to pour the liquids into some kind of container. I didn't expect the heparin I got from the hospital would be used now. She looks at him and says, you're going to use this to make two bottles instead of one? And he says, something like that. The roulette isn't the only one. Other places also have various ones, and each roulette has different rewards. We can use the remaining bottle to trade for skill cards or special medicines from other people. Hearing this, she says, 
she understands. How do you know so much? When he hears her say that, he gets a little flustered, trying to change the subject. Ah, about that. The medicine's water needs to be strictly controlled. The temperature is too high. We need to lower it a bit. Remember the process standard and the temperature. The next bottle, you're going to make it. She happily nods, saying, Right, I'll memorize everything. That way, we can make the second bottle. Brother, so, how do you know how to do this? Shh. Don't make a sound. What kind of dream is this? Then he realizes something is approaching. He starts sweating and grabs her hand, pulling her along. Why are we running? Something more troublesome than zombies is approaching. What kind of monster? Mutant insects. Then the door moves, and the glass starts cracking, and they begin to climb the stairs while she looks back. Then, we see a large beetle begin to enter. A mutant stink bug. After being infected by the virus, it turned into an insect monster that consumes humans. It's not strong in combat skills, but they move in groups, like an army of them. They start climbing up where they passed, and they enter the room. He realizes there's a room nearby. He says, follow me and help me push the wardrobe to block the door. They begin to push the door and manage to lock it. What are they? Mutant stink bugs. The apocalypse didn't just turn humans into zombies, but many organisms like plants and animals were affected. Mutant organisms will also attack humans. They eat human flesh to survive, and she becomes terrified. When suddenly they start pounding on the door, and she gets scared. When they notice, the door is already being broken down, and she moves towards him and grabs him. Then she grabs him, and says she's scared, and what they would do now. He looks at her and says, don't be afraid my dear, I'm here. Her eyes sparkle. Then, turning her around, he says, boy don't do this, pull down your pants and stick out your butt. Then he says, hide in here, don't come out unless I tell you to, but what about you? Don't worry, it'll be over in an instant. Then the insects start breaking through the door, and he approaches, saying, now is the time to use this. Then he grabs the bottle, saying he hates the side effects. Then the mutant insects start invading every part of the house. They begin breaking everything in their path, trying to enter. Realizing the insects are already coming through the door, I have no choice. I'll have to drink this now. Then, he gulps it down, and the effect starts kicking in. He drops to his knees on the floor, screaming, while the insect appears behind him, already preparing, and jumps on him. Then, we see the insect already on top of him, while the others are approaching. Then he grabs that knife, stabs the insect's head and kicks it away. He stands up and starts attacking the others, and his eyes were already red, crimson, already ready to attack, saying, this hurts, damn it. Seeing the insects coming at him, he starts saying, damn it, I'll kill you all, and starts attacking them all at once. He yells, die, and just like that, he finishes them all at once, the knife already dripping green liquid. He starts to rest after this long battle. These damn insects, there's definitely a queen. One of them must be leading. If I don't kill Kill her, they'll keep coming. Then, as soon as he says that, she appears behind him, right on time. Realizing her offspring have been defeated, she attacks him with green liquid, and he jumps. And then we realize it was a corrosive liquid. A necklace falls to the ground, and he steps on it. When suddenly, he says, want revenge for your kids? And she prepares, running toward him. Coming according to my past life? Your weak spot is here. Then we see the red dot, where he's going to aim, and he strikes at that spot. She lets out a loud scream, opening her mouth. Now die, and so he finishes off that monster falling to the ground. Then he jumps down. The more strength I use, the greater the side effects of the medicine. This hurts like hell. He opens the door again. You can come out now, my little friend. Then, seeing him, she jumps into his arms. I know you like that, you little naughty bunch. He realizes she's hugging him tightly and says, you. And she keeps giving that warm hug. And he says, crying over something like this? This is the apocalypse. In the apocalypse, the least valuable things are tears and so we see that our girl was crying. She starts wiping her face, saying, Who's crying? This place is just really stinky. And the tears came down because of that. Is that so? Yes, we won't talk about it anymore. She notices the bodies on the floor, both insect bodies. What will we do with them? Hmm, they're good stuff. Good stuff. Even though we still have enough food from abandoned houses and markets, in a year, food will be very rare and precious. She looks at him and says, Because of the mutation, we can't farm and raise 
raise animals to get food? Yes, food in the future will come from three main sources. Food that hasn't spoiled yet, roulette rewards, and jerky made from these bodies. And she's like, we're going to eat these insect bodies? Eating insects is better than eating humans. And so she stays silent. Then we see that the pecanha was already prepared just the way the viewers like it. And she's already prepared, wearing a mask and apron, ready to cut the pecanha into pieces. She closes her eyes saying, I have to do this. He approaches, noticing she was working hard. Yes, you did a good job cutting the meat. Meat, huh? You don't have the courage to say it now? Knowing it's so gross, do you? Are you planning to go out again? Yes, I might need to go further this time. We need more crystals and information from around. Okay, I'll dehydrate the meat. She approaches and says, and I'll keep working on improving the medicine. He notices she's sad and continues talking. Trust me, I'll definitely come back. Then he starts to leave, while she just crosses her arms, watching him depart, and so she waits for him to return again. We see him start to run, and one of the zombies is already lying on the ground. He runs and notices that zombie. Suddenly he stops, hearing someone shouting for help. He grits his teeth, saying, Idiot, yelling so loud, are you trying to call all the zombies here? Then as he keeps running, he notices a girl on the ground, and when she sees him, she pleads for help. Save me, please. He quickly covers her mouth. Shut up. I don't want to die because of you. And then we see all the zombies already appearing behind them, and they start advancing towards her. The zombie grabs her clothes while he tries to pull her away. Then he quickly pulls out the machete and cuts the zombie. Then the zombie's head is disconnected, and he pushes her away, telling her to run because there are too many of them. So she starts running. She spots a place and heads toward it. Opening the door, she enters and closes it. She starts crying, and she opens the door again, and starts calling out to him saying, Quick, get in here. He starts running and goes inside, inside the door. As the zombie's hands were getting closer, already exhausted, he begins to close the door. But a zombie starts getting closer and puts its hand in the way. When they notice that the hand was placed there, they get scared and tell each other to go up the stairs. They start running up the stairs, and the zombies begin closing in on her. She's already tired. When suddenly the zombie's hand grabs her leg. She starts screaming, and he looks, realizing she's been grabbed. He quickly grabs her in his arms while removing the zombie's head. Then he pulls her aside, noticing that all the zombies were already approaching. Then a great flash occurs, and he turns to see what it was. Then he sees a great flash passing through the sky, and he says, The dungeon key? A dungeon key appeared? The dungeon key? A dungeon key appeared? A dungeon key, said to be one of the rarest items in the apocalyptic world, is the only way to reach the mysterious land of the dungeon, which is full of hope. In my past life, even the veterans of high-ranking stars coveted it. In this life, that dungeon key will be mine. Ah, watch out! Then the girl, realizing something, says, Watch out! Before we knew it, the zombie was already climbing, trying to grab our protagonist. When he realized he was in danger, he punched the zombie hard in the face. Die! You almost bit my balls! And with that, the zombie went flying. Narrow stairs. Very good for defense and counterattacking. At least ten of them here. Let's finish this. The zombie starts coming towards our protagonist, and again he starts using his machete, cutting off its hand, making it float in the air as green liquid spurts, passing by the girl while she just watches in shock. Then we see the girl's past. A few days ago, I had everything I ever wanted. Followers. Everything. Minions who did everything for me. Fame, money, wisdom, and knowledge. I was pampered by God. But now everything has changed, and we see zombies attacking. Her entire family, even her own father, was attacked. Dad, I lost everything. And she starts crying. Then tears run down her face. So scary, I'm going to die here. Don't be stupid. Don't just sit there. Hurry. Climb up. Realizing this, she notices that he was still fighting bravely. And she, crying, just watches. As the zombie falls, she thinks to herself, this man, he killed so many zombies by himself. Then, already fatigued, he starts calling to her saying, If you don't want to die, then don't just sit there. I have to find that dungeon key soon. He starts climbing the stairs and she thinks to herself, I thought I was going to die today. This man is so strong. The rooftop is connected to the building in front. We'll be able to get out that way. Ah, okay. If I go down through the building in front, just two more streets, and I'll reach where the dungeon key will drop. He starts climbing the stairs and notices something. Some vines were blocking their path. Why are there so 
many vines blocking this place, and they're still moving? Before she realizes it, the vines start moving and grab her. When she is caught, she's squeezed in various parts of her body, like she was grabbed by hentai tentacles. He notices this and says, Ah, such a troublemaker, and he starts attacking the vines, then grabs her in his arms, shooting, and says, She, all blushing, says, He risked his life to save me. Could it be that he, she clings to him tighter, crying, Such a strong man, if he falls for my charm. Just as she says that, he drops her on the ground, and she doesn't understand why. Huh? What? He continues cutting the vines. I hate these annoying mutant plants. Mutant plants? Looks like he's trimming the weeds. He sighs, saying, Ah, such a waste of time, man. Then he prepares to open the door. She notices that the door was locked. He then says, The door can't be opened. It seems it's locked from the other side. So what are we going to do? This. He prepares to kick down the door with all his strength. When he breaks it down, he notices that some people were already armed, ready to attack them. But they were just civilians. So the two of them watch. As they observe, the blonde guy asks, Who are you? What are you doing up here? Then he says, It's not safe downstairs, so we came up. Why are you hiding here? Then, angrily, he says, Damn it, why did you break the door? What if those zombies come up here? He says, Don't worry, there are no more zombies. I confirmed it before coming. You said there are no more? So, there aren't any left? Zombies are always around. Who knows when one might suddenly come climbing up? Angrily, he points while the others hold the door. They start putting it back in place, and the mohawked guy says, it's beyond repair. We can only use this shovel to block it. It's all your fault. If the zombies come in here, we'll all die. The mohawked guy approaches him and says, forget it. He didn't know we were here either. He points his bat. Our protagonist just watches, while the girl hides fearfully behind him. Then he notices someone in the back, and some people are hiding there. They're just like you. Came here to hide from the zombies. Below. He keeps talking. Seems like there was a misunderstanding. What are you planning to do now? He he looks and says, I have to get to that school. So you're planning to go to the school? Your relatives are trapped? at the school, but the street is full of zombies. How do you plan to get there? Then we see that zombies are already all over the city. He continues talking. I'll see if there's a passage that connects to it. Seems like some light landed there. I imagine it is. A light really descended on that school. Because of that, you ran and want to go to that dangerous place? You're so brave. Any shortcut? Protagonist asks. The guy points. Yes, there's a platform and a building near the roof, but you'll have to jump, so it's pretty dangerous. Hey, don't even think about it. You're going to end up paralyzed, man. He starts thinking, the opposite floor is one story lower. The roof of this building and that one is about five meters apart. Okay, I'll jump from here. She grabs his clothes. I'm going with you, don't leave me behind. He looks at her and says, then carry my backpack. He starts to take it off and hands it to her. And she says, okay. The blonde guy noticing the backpack approaches and says, you're really going to make her jump with that huge backpack? Are you trying to die? Why don't you get Give me that backpack. They keep watching. Then he starts smiling with a gleam on his face. Don't get the wrong idea. I'll help you hold the backpack, and after you jump, I'll throw it to you. Come on, hand it over. Then she grabs the backpack, with a look that says she won't give it to him. I'll carry the backpack. Hey, carry the backpack. She, realizing, says, okay. She puts the backpack on her back, while he starts tying a rope around her waist and attaching it to himself. Then, he moves past the railing and starts getting ready to jump. Soon, we see the bat approaching his hand, and the blonde guy points to his hand. Hey, your backpack is full of items, right? She, realizing, yells, you! He just watches, leave your backpack or I'll break your hand. He smiles, says idiot, and jumps off. Oh my god, he really jumped? These guys really want to die? And with that, he jumps. Then he manages to cross to the other side, while they watch, impressed that he made it. She's all trembling, and he asks, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Then we see someone with binoculars, just watching from afar. Interesting. I found something interesting. And then we see a muscular guy, and right behind him, a blonde girl surrounded by two men. Shit, that bitch dared to bite me? Are you done? It's my turn now. And then we realize she was being abused. My turn to enjoy you, sweetheart. The one with the cigarette starts talking. Want to bet how long he's going to last? I bet a minute. If I win, I want your cigarette. Stop dreaming. This filthy place doesn't even have a bottle of wine. I only found this cigarette because of that dead old man. Then we realize that the deep web Saitama was there in the back, just watching. We then see that while one of the students was on the ground, he says, 
This is expected in a school cafeteria. Where did you expect to find wine? If you want to find wine, go to the principal's office. Then, the deep web Saitama says, Wasn't that place blocked by some idiot student? What will we do? Wait for the fifth brother. I hope he throws everyone into that horde of zombies. Don't throw the girls, though. Leave them. Come on, haven't you had enough fun already? Then he opens the door and says, You brats! What are you talking about? Fifth brother, outside is full of zombies. We can't leave this place. Are we going to be trapped here? Then another person taps his arm and says, In just one night, everything changed. It's zombies and demons filling this world. Is this an apocalypse? Apocalypse? Brother, look. Now you can do whatever you want. Play and have fun with whoever you want. This world now, the strong make the law. Whoever is powerful makes the rules. And with that, that guy keeps having his way. You think this is an apocalypse? Number, this is our paradise. Meanwhile, the zombies continue walking outside. We then see that our protagonist was hiding, watching the zombies. He gestures for her to come closer. They start running, and we get a beautiful landscape view. Our protagonist looks around, checking for any zombies. He begins to speed up while she, exhausted, can't keep up. Run slower! I can't keep up with you. I was stupid to save dead weight. I was deceived by her face. Small mistake. Recklessness cost me a lot of time. So he starts to slow down. Sigh. What bad luck. I'll go slower. Catch up with me. Finally, you waited for me. Now I can catch up. They keep running and approach a place. Great. There are few zombies here. But he says, no way. This is a school. A place where people gather. But I don't hear or see any zombies. That's because they're all gathered in one place. And so, they begin to enter. Meanwhile, inside the school, zombies were trying to get into a room. The students were using all kinds of objects to stop them from entering. Give up! Even if we don't get bitten, we'll die of hunger. Then we see a girl, already sad. So, we can only stay here and wait for death. She notices something and says, there's someone outside. Someone came here. They realize she starts shouting, hey, hey, come here. The girl notices, oh, there are people here. While she keeps watching, he keeps walking. You can barely protect yourself. Don't be nosy. Hurry up. They keep calling. Then two more guys show up and keep shouting, Brother, brother, please save us. We don't want to die. Please save us. She starts to worry about those guys along with the girl. Then coldly, he says, Faster. Even faster. Their cries will only attract more zombies. It'll be a problem if a large group of zombies comes rushing here. And with that, they keep shouting. And she just keeps silently apologizing. They get closer to a corner and start observing. Then, she says sadly, Sorry, but we really can't save them. They're probably trapped by zombies in that room, crying and screaming. You don't even know how many zombies are there. I don't have the ability to save them. If you want to save them, go yourself. And with that, she apologizes, not understanding the gravity of the situation. Wake up and face reality in this apocalypse. I hope you're not stupid enough to do something reckless. And with that, they keep walking. We then see a zombie hanging and they keep moving while she observes the zombie. Why did he come to a school? Is there some way to hide from the zombies here? She says nervously, Thank you for saving me before, but I still don't know your name. Thank me for saving your life. Shouldn't you be more sincere? One word and your debt is paid? I risked my life for you. What do you want? Of course, it's to use you as bait to attract zombies. She gets all scared from behind. Then he looks at her and says, No, don't think you're special or that others should save you just because you're pretty. In a crisis, you could be even more useless than a pack of instant noodles. Oh boy, I know, I know, she says. And with that, she falls silent and, with her head down, says, My name is Li Yang Chu Yin. And he dryly responds, Yi Zong Ming. She notices he gave his name and gets a little happy, saying, So, his name is Ye Zong Ming. Even though he's foul-mouthed, he's not a bad person. Then a scream is heard from afar. They notice and look up. Someone was attacking a student, and they were screaming in fear. She covers her mouth in despair. Then he thinks of that corner. He must have seen where the key fell. He starts running and says, Hide! She screams his name. He starts running fast, climbing like a ninja. The zombie was already biting that boy. When the zombie notices, our protagonist jumps through the window, kicking it in the face. Then he pulls out his machete while the zombie's mouth is still open. He quickly takes advantage and disconnects the zombie's head. The others run toward the teacher. The teacher, holding two students, says, thank you for saving my students. He remains vigilant and says, as expected, they must have seen where the dungeon key landed. The teacher gets close to the student and says her colleague is dead.
dead. The other two start crying, and she tries to calm them down. Don't cry. We need to think of a way to get out of here first. Yes, teacher. I don't want to stay here another second. The other girl with short hair starts saying, but we can't leave. It's full of zombies outside. She looks at him and says, sir, you're so strong. Could you take us out of this place? The other students already left and I'm only here with these two girls. He observes and says, I came to this school for a reason. If you can tell me where it is, I'll protect you and guarantee your safety. They realize he wanted something and are surprised. What are you looking for? Did you see where the light from the sky landed? Where is it? The girl in the back says she didn't see anything, while the other just shakes her head, saying she didn't see either. The teacher, sweating, starts thinking of something. Wait, I saw it, but I have some conditions. You need to save us and take us out of this place first, then I'll tell you. Conditions? What proof do you have that you saw it? That light appeared in the sky like a meteor, landing somewhere in the school. He starts thinking again. I think she really saw it. Where did it land? What if, after I tell you, you just leave us here? If you stay here, only death awaits you. If you tell me where it landed, at least you'll have a chance to live. You can choose. With that, she stays silent and asks, If I tell you, will all of us be saved? He crosses his arms, striking a tough pose and says, There are too many zombies in this building, and I can't protect three people at once. With my combat skills, I can take two people at most and escape. The two girls, surprised? Two people? Can't you push yourself a bit more? Are you even human? Our request is reasonable. How can you be like this? He starts pulling out his knife. In this world now, nothing is reasonable or fair. Only the strong survive and the weak die. Choose who will be saved. After he says this, they glance at the body of the other student who had already passed away. Teacher, I'm scared. Then the teacher strokes her head and says, don't be afraid. The teacher is here. Then he looks at the teacher and says, so teacher, who are you bringing with you? She looks at him, saying there's nothing to hesitate about. Take my two students with you. As soon as she says that, the students start crying out, teacher. Then he agrees, saying, okay, I'll take the two of them to safety. You can tell me where the light landed now? After you take them out of here, I will write the location where the light landed on a paper and throw it. Then he thinks, as expected, this woman might be a teacher, but she's not stupid. He turns his back and says, I hope your sacrifice was worth it. Let's go. Then the others begin to say their goodbyes. The one in the yellow shirt says, teacher, and she replies, all right, go now quickly. They move closer to the door, trying to listen for any sounds outside. Then he realizes there are three of them behind the door. He says, when we go out, close the door quickly and don't make any noise. She agrees, saying she understood. He starts opening the door with the knife in his hand, and as soon as he opens it, a zombie appears. The two behind him begin to scream, and right after, he kicks the zombie, sending it flying into the wall. The other two that were there, he begins to slash them one by one. Quick, go, quickly! The teacher starts to close the door, while the other student calls out to her, and with that, the teacher closes the door, seeing her last moments with the students. She was so scared, still trying to act like a hero. But I'm a teacher. I have a duty to protect my students. Then we see the stairs with all the creatures already fallen on the ground, and he keeps running, telling them to hurry. They keep running down the stairs, and then he stops. There are too many zombies. It's exhausting having to protect two students, but there's no sound downstairs. It seems the zombies are concentrated on the upper floors. It's safer now. Then suddenly he starts to feel a heavy aura. What? What is this? Stop! Back up! One step! Step back! They stop and ask, is there something ahead? I don't know, but I feel something. Let me see. There are no zombies in front. Are you sure you felt something? Then he grits his teeth. Yeah, I'm really feeling wrong. He keeps looking down while he continues thinking. I think I really felt wrong. There's no time to waste. Keep moving. And with that, we see the vision of someone watching them. And up there, it's watching with glowing eyes. While our protagonist keeps walking, and when we notice, a large monster with its tongue out was approaching. Our protagonist opens his mouth, realizing something. What is that? He looks up. Suddenly, the other girl bumps into him and says, Hey, why did you stop again? He tells her to shut up and keeps watching. He looks up. There's nothing. I'm being too sensitive. Even my instincts are wrong. I've been too cautious. And so they start descending again. Let's go. 
keep moving forward. Then the monster had already moved away and hid somewhere else. They continue down the stairs, while we see that the monster was creeping up behind one of them, and its presence was already so close that the other girl was completely on edge. Just from its proximity, he keeps saying, how strange. And when we notice, the large monster is already behind the two girls, and he's already further ahead. Then the monster extends its tongue and touches the girl's hair. She touches her hair, starts noticing something slimy and says, what is this? Then when we see, the monster lunges at her screaming with a monstrous voice, meat! And she screams. It opens its large jaws, preparing to attack her as she starts crying. Suddenly, a knife flies toward it, quickly cutting off a piece of its mouth. When we see, our protagonist grits his teeth while he stands in the position of having thrown the knife. The monster, trying to understand what just happened, looks at the knife and sees it stuck in the wall. It starts screaming, shoving the girl aside, and screams even more. The monster charges toward our protagonist. He dodges, prepares, and punches it, but the punch has no effect. No effect? He's worried when he notices the monster's claw is already approaching. This is a mutated metal armed zombie. Why is it here? As soon as he says that, the zombie attacks him and he skillfully dodges. Has the mutation speed of zombies really been this fast? He grits his teeth, preparing a powerful kick, and when he attacks with a kick, the kick has no effect either. No effect? Then the mutated zombie grabs his leg and slams him into the ground with all its strength. He curls up, coughing on the ground. The other two girls are exhausted. One falls to the floor, and the other leans against the stairs to avoid falling. Lily, I can't get up. Can you help me? Then the other girl, betraying her, starts climbing the stairs, and the one on the ground yells, Lily! And so she realizes she's been left to survive on her own. When she least expects it, the mutated zombie is already bringing both hands together, preparing to smash our protagonist. He grits his teeth, and from her perspective, she sees his final moments as the zombie attacks with full force. Then, worried, when she least expects it, a loud noise is heard, and green blood splatters into the air. And when we notice, our protagonist finishes the job by using a pistol. Luckily, I brought the gun I got from the roulette. Damn, I almost died. He starts getting up, all twisted, and says, If you don't want to become zombie food, get up now. She begins to get up while the traitor comes back. He starts hearing a noise from downstairs and becomes worried. Damn, the sound of the gun attracted more zombies. The footsteps keep getting louder and he's already sweating cold and starting to get more concerned. The girl from behind asks, who's coming up? The other one, already worried, asks if the shot attracted zombies. And when we see, someone approaches. Ah, it's her, Liang Chu Yin. When we see, it's our girl who's approaching. She starts running quickly up the stairs, saying, finally, I found you. He's like, what? And she grabs him, calling his name. Huh? Why did you come here? Then, the short-haired one asks, who is she? Was she bitten before? We see her trembling, crying. I waited for you for so long I was terrified. The teaching building is full of zombies. Are you trying to get yourself killed? She wipes her tears. Now the teaching building is glowing. I saw the zombies all being drawn towards that light. I thought the light would attract the zombies, so I took a chance and came to find you. Wait, you said the light source attracted the zombies? Yes, I saw them, so they're all drawn to that place. And I was too scared to stay alone down there, so I came to find you. He started starts walking and says, you're lucky you didn't encounter any zombies. He pulls out his machete. Only one type of light source can attract zombies, the light from the shining wheel. Let's head down first. He grabs her hand and starts going down. Then the others follow behind, and she looks back. He saved these two girls? Xiao Xiao, I was so scared earlier. Yeah, you're not going to hate me, right? Don't worry, you didn't do it on purpose. As they step outside, he stops, and she realizes what's happening. He looks up, and the teacher is still up there. Then they all look at the teacher. Hey, I said look at the teacher, you bunch of perverts. It's the teacher. Puh, shh, speak quietly, or you'll attract zombies. Then the teacher still says, excellent, the kids are safe. If I don't tell him where the light source landed, will he save me? She shakes her head, saying, No, Pu Shuying, don't do unnecessary things. The kids are safe. And with that, she throws the paper down from above. As the paper falls, they notice it. Is there still someone up there? Then the protagonist says, She's a great teacher. A great teacher? Then why didn't you save her? Because she tried to threaten me. So 
she needs to be taught a lesson. I can't understand this guy. Then he starts smiling. So that's where the dungeon key landed. A safe place ordinary people would never notice. Now, there are two places to explore. One is the construction site where the dungeon key is. The other is the shining item Liang Xiu Ying mentioned. There's a high chance it's another wheel. These two students are strange. Unreliable. I can't bring them to find the dungeon key. So I'll check out the place Xu Ying mentioned. He approaches and says, Let's go check out the bright light you mentioned. But there are a lot of zombies gathered there. Which means, there's a lot of stuff. She doesn't understand, making a confused face. He looks back and says, You two, we're going somewhere, follow us. And they both confirm, saying, Okay. They begin crossing the buildings and then arrive at a place. Don't go in. I saw many zombies going inside. She tries to stop him. What? There are zombies here? Why did you bring us here? Are you here to die? Then the short hair one starts getting angry. You got what you wanted from our teacher. Now you want to sacrifice us and use us as zombie bait, right? He looks at them and says, don't worry, don't be scared. As for you two, this is the apocalypse. There will be zombies everywhere. Then he pulls out the machete. As for using you as bait, I'm not that despicable. With that, he starts walking. Just wait outside, I'll be back soon. He, with his machete in hand, starts entering the place. The other girls stay behind, just watching. Then the girl keeps thinking. Why does she insist on continuing? Is there something important there? Then the traitor starts thinking. That scared me. I thought he wanted us to be the bait. This guy is crazy. So what if he has a gun? There are too many zombies. While they attack him, can his bullets hit them all at once? She grabs the other girl's hand and says, Xiao Xiao, come with me. The other responds, Why? Don't you think we should find a safe place and hide? Aren't you worried about them? As she says that, the other girl is already walking ahead. That moment has passed. Who cares about them? There are too many zombies in there. Ye Zong Ming will die in there. But he saved us before. So dot. Enough. If they're bothered and they run towards us, we'll be dead. Then the girl realizes they've stayed behind. What are you two doing? Well, my stomach felt uncomfortable. She's going to accompany me to the bathroom. The other just stays silent. Then she grabs the other's hand and starts walking. And our girl just remains in doubt about what they're trying to do. She looks to where our protagonist entered and says, he'll be okay. Then the light shines and we see that the protagonist is surrounded by zombies. I'm so lucky. No mutant zombies. It wouldn't be easy to deal with them. He bites the machete and says, this is going to be a tough battle. Then he pulls his arm down. We see that his shoulder was dislocated. In my previous life, I fixed bones many times. Even so, it still hurts. Just as he expected, the zombies begin to notice his presence, and they start surrounding him from all sides. He pulls out his pistol and machete, preparing to fight them. Suddenly, he fires several shots, and the girl begins to notice. Ye Jong Ming! The others realize and start worrying. He's shooting. Let's get out of here. Let's leave this crazy place. The one crouching down says, but where do you think you're going to run? The teacher's dormitory. During the zombie mutation this morning, no one was there. So it must be safe now, and we can certainly find food there. But, and her? Think about yourself first. Don't worry about others. She looks to the side, lets go of her hand quickly, and starts running while the other angrily says, you. She starts running towards our girl while she notices, we, we should leave this place. It's dangerous here. Then she appears hiding, saying, idiot, more people means less food. Then she starts biting her nail. If I knew, I'd have made an excuse and run away. Why did I bother bringing her along? Then she turns, saying, I, I'm not going. When zombies run, you can't escape. She looks at them and says, after leaving Ye Jong Ming, how long do you think you can survive? The other, confused, says, what? Ye Jong Ming is really strong. In the current situation, leaving him means death. She is shocked, saying, he can't even protect himself. Why are you still, you know he can't protect himself? Because then we return to see the zombies all fallen on the ground, defeated. Our protagonist is already covered in green blood. As expected, my guess was right. The zombies were attracted by this. Then, surprised, he realizes, this is no ordinary wheel. It's a three-colored wheel. He begins explaining about the wheel. When the apocalypse began, there were normal wheels, like life-saving wheels too. And then there were the apocalypse wheels that ranged from level 1 to 9. But there's a level above that, which are special wheels. Just like this three-colored wheel, known as the skill tree wheel. Of course, there are others with five, seven, and even nine colors, all known as skill wheels. Unlike the common level wheels, the more you spin these wheels, the higher the chances of gaining professional skills. You can gain skills like sword warrior, assassin, paladin. There are also support skills like doctor, alchemist, cook, 
etc. Only when you gain one of these skills can you also obtain a specific technique from the wheel. For example, if you gain the assassin skill, you can obtain a technique specific to that skill, like quick slash. Just like in the movies, you can take someone down with a single strike. But the chances of finding this kind of wheel are much lower compared to the regular ones, so they're considered rare. I never thought I would find a skill tree wheel right here, but this kind of wheel also carries risks. If I spin it and the pointer lands on the black zone, the wheel will explode like a bomb. Then, observing carefully, he says, wait, the black zone also has a symbol like the others, so it's a skill area, which means it won't explode. Can a guy as unlucky as me get lucky spinning this? He looks at his hands, remembering the girl. Or did Shin Fei really pass some of her luck onto me? The other two girls are outside, watching. There are so many zombies in there and this man won't come out alive. You need to come with us. She looks at them and says, I trust him. If you want to run away, I'll warn you to be careful and not make any noise. Otherwise, you'll be devoured by the zombies. And with that, we notice she holds great respect for our protagonist. Then the other one says, We won't encounter any. Ye Zhongming lured them all inside. There aren't many zombies out here. Xiao Xiao, come with me. Don't waste your time talking to her. She starts getting angry. Then she continues again. Don't be like her, thinking that Ye Zhongming is some invincible warrior or something. Let that idiot wait here alone for his corpse. She starts getting irritated, and an aura begins to emit from her. She gives a powerful slap to the lazy girl. Shut up! Don't forget! Who saved you? How can you talk like that about him? The other one, already angry, says, You wretch, you slapped me. The other one tries to calm her down and asks if she's okay. Then she retaliates by slapping our girl hard on the face. Here's what you deserve, you bach. Don't think that guy can protect you forever. Xiao Xiao, let's go. And with her hand on her face, she starts to realize they were leaving, and they run off. Then we see binoculars watching her again. Girls fighting? Hmm, how interesting. The muscular, scar-faced man says, Go over there and capture that girl. The other two behind him say, Fifth brother, don't send us to do that. There are a lot of zombies out there. Idiot. All the zombies went towards the media center. It's safe. Now go and bring her. The scene shifts back to the two girls. Lily, is it okay for us to leave like this? She continues, walking down angrily. Stop complaining, it's your fault I got slapped. Suddenly, they hear a noise coming from a truck. What's that? Something's moving. And with that, we return to our girl walking. Damn ingrates! If it weren't for Ye Jongming, they'd still be trapped inside with the zombies. Bunch of ingrates! Suddenly, she notices something. Someone starts screaming. Those screams? Are they those two? As she says this, a shadow appears behind her and grabs her. Hey, 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 gotcha. Let me go. Who are you? Then another guy appears. What a beauty we have here. Better than those other ones we played with. What are you planning to do? What do you think? Of course, we're going to have fun with you. Already scared, she starts saying, he won't let you get away with this. Leave me alone. That guy? That guy's already dead. You're stupid to keep trusting him. Realizing this, she begins to cry, saying, what? What did you say? Yi Zhongming? Is he dead? Then we cut back to our protagonist. So tiring. Taking them out one by one takes too long. It would be great if, like, in a game, I could collect everything at once. Then we go back to those two girls with zombies chasing them. They start running, screaming for help. The traitor tells her to stop screaming because no one will help them. As she looks back, the zombie's hand is already closing in on them. The zombie was about to touch her, and she trips on the ground. The other one, realizing her friend fell, moves closer to help her up. But unexpectedly, the traitor closes her eyes, sad, and abandons her friend to die, leaving her for the zombie. The zombie approaches and prepares to attack, while she just runs off, crying and apologizing. Her friend just screams. After running, she keeps saying that she wants to live. Then she notices that the girl was being dragged by those two thugs. She's heavy. I'll enjoy being the first one when we get back. Ha! Fifth brother is going to beat you up. Our girl looks to the side and notices the traitor. She starts moaning, trying to get attention. The others notice and start looking at her. Then she gathers courage and says, get away. The other guy notices and starts chasing after her. There's another girl. I'm going to get her. The slick haired one says, go fast. Don't let her escape. She screams and he starts running after her, smiling just as he expects. She bites his finger. 
He screams, and she runs off. When I catch you, you're done! She starts screaming for help. He jumps, grabbing her by the head. Gotcha! She screams. Yi Jong Ming! That guy won't save you, he's already dead. Suddenly, a blade pierces his hand. He screams. Ye Jong Ming appears, grabbing the girl. She's happy that he grabbed her and says, Thank God you're alive. He stands up with his machete and says, You son of a bee, Shah! Do you know who we are? If you hit me, fifth brother will. But our protagonist doesn't let him finish and charges forward, landing a powerful punch right in the middle of his gut. He flies backward, falling. Without time to rest, our protagonist lifts his foot high and stomps on his face. The thug falls foaming at the mouth and our protagonist says, Where are the other two girls? She points to the side. He asks her to wait, and she agrees. The rain starts falling, and she's crying on the ground, apologizing. Our protagonist approaches while the other one has her arms crossed. Angry, he starts thinking. When I saw Xiao Xiao's body a few seconds ago, she had been bitten by a zombie. The girl starts saying, This is the second time Ye Zhong Ming has saved you. I told you not to stray away from him. She begins crying, saying she was wrong and that she will never do that again. What do you plan to do with these two idiots? He looks and says, The zombies will take good care of them. We see that they are tied up. She says, How horrible. Great. Then he points, saying, You can go to the media center first. I cleared the place. It's safe for now. They agree. She confirms, saying, Right. While the traitor is amazed that he killed those zombies, she smiles, saying he's very strong and that the girl was right. She grits her teeth, saying she needs to survive and that following them would be the best option. He turns to them and says, Go and wait for me. I need to bring someone here. And with that, they are surprised. We then return to the place where the teacher was. Hearing a noise outside, she starts to get scared as all the furniture is being pushed. She thinks the zombies have returned to get her, and now it's the end for her. She feels there's no reason for her to keep living. As the door continues being pushed, she says she'd rather end her life than be eaten by zombies. Crying, she starts saying, At least two of my students are safe. I never dated anyone and I'm going to die like this. This life is useless. With that, she's ready to end her life. The door is broken down. Our protagonist enters, saying the door was tough. Hey, are you okay? When she realizes it, she drops the shard of glass to the floor and it shatters. On the ground, she starts crying, saying she's glad he came. He approaches and says, It's okay now. I came to save you. Then she lunges at him and grabs him. I thought you wouldn't come back. So, feeling embarrassed, he asks her to stop crying and to let him go. She, now happy, starts saying, I thought I was really going to die. Thank you. It's okay. I need to get you out of here first. We see a hand removing the crystal from the zombie's head. Then we see the two girls again. Our girl looks at the crystal and wonders what these things are. What are these things? Why does Zhang Ming want us to collect them? The other girl, angry, responds, It's disgusting. He still wants me to remove these things from those gross zombies. Suddenly, the teacher appears, calling out to her. When she realizes the teacher has approached, they meet each other. Our protagonist just watches from a distance. She was crying, and the teacher asked where Xiao Xiao was and why she wasn't with her. Then she hugs the girl, saying, I understand. A lot has happened. She continues crying, saying she didn't take good care of her. The teacher comforts her, saying she understands and that she shouldn't worry. Our girl then starts speaking. If we had trusted Ye Zhong Ming and waited instead of running off on our own, this wouldn't have happened. Happened, right? The other girl looks and says, If you had saved the teacher from the beginning, none of this would have happened. You could have saved all three of us, and yet you made the teacher choose. You're a bad person. The teacher, noticing, says, Li Li, you shouldn't say that. The girl continues, You should be grateful to be saved, and yet you have the audacity to say such things. The argument between the two continues, pointing out each other's faults. Tired of it, our protagonist slaps the traitor across the face. You should use your brain before speaking nonsense. I saved you. Nothing stops me from abandoning you again. This is a world infested with zombies. Who knows what we might encounter? Bringing one more person only increases the risk. And remember, you don't have the right to ask people to save you, and I have no obligation to help you. The teacher approaches and says, Li Li, he saved me. I am grateful to him. Mr. Ye Zhong Ming is our benefactor and savior. The traitor just stands in her corner, feeling the sting of the slap. The attractive girl looks at the teacher, admiring that she was a good person. She then asks the protagonist, why he wanted them to collect those crystals. He asks them to follow and they approach the roulette. 
As I explained, this is a three-core skill tree roulette. She says, wow, it looks like magic. So the crystals are used to spin the roulette? You'll find out later. The trader hands over the bag with the crystals, and something appears for him to throw inside. He starts tossing the crystals into the roulette while talking. The skill tree roulette is different from level roulettes. They don't say how many crystals need to be used, but calculate if the crystal's energy is enough to activate them. I wonder if 26 level 1 crystals are enough to spin it at least once. Then we see the roulette starting to spin. Great. The roulette started spinning. At least we didn't kill all those zombies for nothing. They are impressed. And when he notices, it stopped on the red section. A box comes out, and he starts saying, what could it be? Red? It must be an advanced combat skill. Then the system says, congratulations on obtaining the glorious artisan skill. Support skill. Glorious artisan. Skill level 0 to 100. Specialty. Capable of using basic creation skills to customize other skills. Skill techniques. Refinement collection technique. Enhancement technique. Creation technique. Magic incorporation technique. Mosaic technique. He makes a face. What? Artisan? Beginner? In the skill tree roulettes, you get combat skills and support skills. Support skills are used as secondary skills since they don't directly help you improve your combat skills. The artisan class belongs to this support category. Overall, a skill has four levels. Beginner, novice, intermediate, and advanced. I had to get a support skill. Then he continues, hand on head, saying he definitely had terrible luck. The others, still not understanding why he was upset. The trader extends her hand, asking what he got and wanting to see. He hands it to the teacher, saying, take a look. He looks at the brooch, thinking, five colors, that's very strange. They start looking at it. What is this? Doesn't it look like game settings? Level, skill, and specialty? Can you get all this from the roulette? The artisan skill has creation tech technique, magic incorporation technique. Are there a total of five specialties? Hearing this, he says, five specialties? He takes the paper and says, let me see this again. He realizes the specialties in the technique. Now, I see, I finally understand. No wonder the brooch has five colors. It represents each of the specialties. Maybe my luck increased after I revived. With that, his excitement grows. This place still has some zombie corpses. I need you to collect them all. You can exchange the crystals for rewards. This way we can gain more advantages and chances of survival. They excitedly agree to do that. They start dragging the zombies while the scar-faced muscular guy watches them from a distance. That guy is strong. He managed to defeat many zombies alone. But what are they doing? Using the multimedia center as a base and collecting corpses. Then we see our deep web Saitama observing in doubt. Number wait, is that? He continues observing. Saitama from the deep web starts saying, Brother, did you find something strange? What's up? Quick, gather everyone. We have work to do. Brother, what happened? I discovered their little secret. Then the scene shifts back to our attractive girl, who is already tired, saying that it should be enough. She says she's hungry and hasn't eaten all day. He calls her Shu Yin over here. He hands her something to eat, and she thanks him. I've checked the bathroom. There's some water that might be drinkable. This means the school's water reservoir wasn't destroyed. He starts taking off the backpack and hands it to her, saying, Look, there's food for about three days in here, some medical supplies and towels. Help me monitor everything. She's surprised. After handing it over, he says, Look, these resources are very important. They are lifesavers. Take good care of them. He thinks, I can't keep them while I'm out. She looks down, saying, but I'm scared. He looks at her and says, look, I'll trust you temporarily. She holds the backpack tightly. The multimedia center will be our shelter for now. You stay here and keep collecting the crystals. I'll find the key. What? You're going alone? The trader appears and asks if he's abandoning them. He crouches down and says, you'll just be a burden if you come. I'll look for resources and return quickly. The trader asks, and if the zombies attack this place, who will protect us? Then he uses a creation technique. I already told you before, I'm not obligated to protect others. If zombies come, protect yourselves with this. Otherwise, we see that he created an exquisite wooden spear. Medium attack power can be used as a defensive weapon. He finishes, what he expects is just death. They realize they are in trouble. The teacher says, you're right, it's time to learn to protect ourselves. She grabs the traitor. Lee Lee, this world is no longer safe. You can't act like before. You can't live just relying on teachers or your parents to protect you. We all need to become stronger. With with that, he hands the spear to the teacher. Take this to defend yourself. The teacher thanks him. Then, he starts to leave. Ye Jongming, please come back safely. He says goodbye. Don't worry, I'll be back. Until then, take care.
After saying goodbye to the girls, he begins to walk, saying, I'm about to investigate the place where the dungeon key fell. He keeps walking and realizes he has arrived at the location. This is it, the construction site of the new school. This is where the dungeon key fell. No one should come to this construction site, right? As soon as he says that, a figure begins to descend from above, and before he knows it, a hot girl falls right into his arms. He, amazed, just watches, while she, equally confused, just stares at him. When it hits her, she does a backflip, escaping his arms. With great agility, she moves behind him, grabbing his arm and twisting it backward. He, confused, says, what are you doing? I just saved you. She replies, who are you? Why are you here? As soon as she says this, he uses his ability, starting to break free from the hold she put him in. He grabs her by the neck and pins her against the wall. How about you tell me first? Who are you? And what are you doing here? She says, how dare you intimidate a cop. Let me go now. Hearing that, he says, a cop? Feeling the pain in her neck from the strength he's using, she continues. Have you trained in martial arts before? You've got great reflexes. He responds, I've been training for almost 10 years. And he thinks, in my past life, I spent 10 years testing different combat styles. Though at first, I got beaten a lot. Impressed, she says, 10 years? Impressive. You've been training longer than me. So you're, before she can finish speaking, a bullet comes their way. And he quickly grabs her, dodging the shots. They start running to the side as more shots are fired. He asks, who are they? Shooting out of nowhere? She says, they're trying to kill me. I came here to hide from them. Kill you? But aren't you a cop? That's exactly why they want to kill me. And then we see that they are the prisoners who escaped from jail. He thinks, in my past life, there were a lot of people roaming freely, and most of them were prisoners. They were extremely violent. There were no rules or regulations to stop them, so they killed people like they were ants. So why the hell should I show any mercy to them? He grits his teeth as another bullet narrowly misses him. How did they get weapons? She replies, the police armory was raided by them. Then they step out of the shadows, revealing their ugly faces. All right, you go first and attack. That bitch doesn't have any weapons. Force her to come out. And the taller one says, okay, and the kid? Kill him. The scene cuts to the girl approaching the guy's corpse. She approaches him, placing her hand to check if there was still a pulse. Realizing there was none, she says, he had already surrendered. Why did you do that? Isn't he a prisoner? I'm just doing what you as a cop didn't finish, taking him out with the gun. He continues, do you really think letting him go will allow him to change his life? You're so naive, aren't you? What do you mean? You should know. Now there are no legal restrictions. People like him will just keep stealing, raping, and killing. Listen, don't let them have the chance to commit evil acts because of your moment of kindness. In my past life, my ex-girlfriend, Bai Chi Chi, was raped and killed by people like him. So, I'll never show mercy to scum like these bastards. And he finishes, looking at the body. She thinks, even though he sounds extreme, he's rational. He's so young, but he didn't even hesitate to shoot the prisoners to death. What has he experienced to turn him into such a cold-blooded person? Then he keeps walking, continuing on his path. Meanwhile, we were returned to the other guy saying, fifth brother, the two people you sent to save. When I arrived, they were already dead, devoured by zombies. What? Both dead? Yes. That guy knows martial arts, fifth brother. You should stop messing with him. He punches him hard in the face saying, what nonsense are you talking about? If we kill him, the girls and the weapons will be ours. We will be the rulers of this area. He continues, has everyone gathered? Yes, they're all in the hall. He goes to the location and starts opening the door. Brothers, has everyone gathered? Gathered? When they notice him, they say, Fifth brother? Brothers, a brat dared to act arrogantly in our territory. Two of our brothers were killed by him. Then, another interrupts, saying, But brother, they were bitten to death by zombies. He lands another punch, saying, Shut up! Don't talk anymore! How our brothers died isn't important, but you need to understand this. And the other one just cries. In the past, we did things in hiding. Now with zombies roaming everywhere, no one can stop us from doing whatever we want. We are free. It's time to show our power. We can't let a mere brat dare to ruin our paradise. Now, whoever dares provoke us, we'll finish them off. They get hype. Fifth brother, you're right. Yes. We're the bosses of this area. Anyone who dares kill our brothers must die. Great brothers, let's go. We'll kill them together. Brat, today is the day you die. Then another guy comes up and says, Fifth brother, what about me? What should I do? I have something more important for you to do. And the guy is left confused. As the day ends with a beautiful sunset, the protag is searching for the key. The hot cop appears behind him saying, Hey, what are you looking for? I lost a very important key. I need to find it today. A key? 
What kind of key? I've never seen one like it before, but its design is very unique. Hmm, you'll know it when you see it. She crouches down and says, how about I help you search some more? This place is so big. Do you think we can find it before it gets dark? He darkens his expression and says, finding it in the dark is actually easier. The dungeon key emits a bright light. She startles him by saying, oh, I found it. Is this it? He turns and says, as expected from a cop, you found it so quickly. But when he looks, he says, what the hell is this? We see the key has a character from some cartoon he watched as a kid but can't remember the name. If you know the name, leave a comment for us. Isn't this the key? Look at the design, it's unique too. Sweating, he says, even if it's unique, that's not the right one. She throws it away, saying, ah, that's a shame. As the key hits the ground, a paw is seen, and suddenly, a mutant with glowing eyes appears through the smoke. She notices and says, hey, that's a dog. There's a dog right there, he says. A dog? Yes, my vision isn't bad. Look where I threw the key. He focuses, trying to see what it is, and says, that's a zombie movement. She keeps pointing, saying, it's definitely a dog. We interacted with police dogs before when we were training. Training. They're very obedient. You just need to know the method. And then, we see a mutant dog with multiple horns. It opens its mouth, preparing to attack, and charges toward our protag. He's shocked, and the hot cop behind him notices. The mutant dog is already lunging at him. The protag says, a mutant dog from Hank 2? He pulls out his gun and starts shooting at it, but the dog swiftly dodges. It charges toward the protag. By the time he notices, it's already too late, and the hot cop gets worried. The dog opens its mouth to bite him, but then it sniffs him and suddenly it starts wagging its tail and licking him. He says, what's wrong with this dog? The hot cop says, it seems like it's trying to be friendly with you. He's confused. He keeps looking at the dog as it wags its tail. Then he notices something on its tail and says, wait, could you be? We flash back to the protag's past. He remembers something. Damn, where did this filthy dog come from trying to steal my stuff? We see the little dog trembling. Disappear. The little dog grabs some bread or a cracker, who knows, and runs off. It speeds away quickly, trying to escape. A drunk guy says, I'm going to kill you. He smashes a bottle into the dog's gut, causing it to fall and tremble. He walks up, puts his leg behind the dog, and steps on its tail. Hey, 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 you little brat. Let's see where you can run now. He keeps stepping on it, hurting the dog dog, making the viewers furious at this bastard. Our protag rushes in. The drunk guy notices and says, hey kid, what are you trying to do here? Protag points and says, that dog is full of bacteria. My mom got bitten by it before and she got really infected. She had a nasty rash for days. Not only does it carry lots of bacteria, but fleas too. It's really dirty. Don't touch it. The drunk guy steps back from the dog and the protag continues. There are tons of fleas and flea eggs. When it moves, they all fall everywhere. We see the little dog retreating after leaving the area. Protag watches as it runs away happily. The drunk guy mutters, ah, what a crappy day, man. The protag bows, saying, take care, and feels good about having saved the little dog. Then he realizes something. We see the dog hugging him. Oh, how cute. Then he notices the dog's tail is injured. He gives the dog a cracker to eat. The little thing eats it, looking adorable. The protag feels sad and says, even though you're really cute, my family won't let me take care of you. So he says goodbye to the little dog. Time passes, and we see them playing together until the dog grows up. We learn that the dog's name is Yellow Pill. Wait, what kind of name is that? The hot cop says, so it's your dog? You recognized it even after it mutated. But its name sounds so strange. It's a stray I used to feed. It looked like a small yellow ball, so I called it Yellow Pill. And we see the dog prancing around happily. The hot policewoman watches from a distance, while the dog continues playing with him. Observing this, she starts thinking, so, this person has a soft side too. Hmm, another one for the list, guys. We then switch back to the girls, and the trader starts speaking. Hey, Liang Chu Ying, isn't there any food left in that bag? She replies, no, there isn't. Who do you think you're fooling? I just saw there were cans of meat inside. Why don't you take them out and share with us? The teacher notices and says, Lily. The hot girl replies, you should be happy I gave you food to eat. If you don't want to eat, spit out that biscuit and give it back. She grabs the bag saying, since you're not doing anything, I'll get it myself. Pulling it back, the other girl says, hey, what are you doing? Ye Jong Ming gave it to me to take care of. You don't have permission to touch it. The trader keeps pushing. He's not here now. Don't try to use him to scare me. You should share the food and give us some. The hot teacher steps in and says, Lily, stop. There's nothing worth fighting over. It's not like she's keeping everything for herself and not sharing 
with us. The traitor, still angry, says, This disgusting girl. Who gave her the right to use power like that? Fine, keep your dog food to yourself then. The hot girl thinks, This girl is so arrogant and evil. I shouldn't have given her any food to begin with. The hot teacher continues, Lily, that food doesn't belong to us. She's already shared some with us. We should be grateful. The traitor turns her head, not wanting to listen, and says, Teacher, all you do is talk. What good is that? She then sits down, angry, complaining about how the teacher is too kind and how they could have taken everything for themselves. She also keeps talking bad about the protag, saying that he might not even come back. The scene cuts to him sneezing, and the hot policewoman says, What? Did you catch a cold? He replies, No, someone must be thinking about me. He continues, This place has plenty of resources. See if you can find anything else. She crouches down and says, Luckily, I have a flashlight. That'll make it easier to find things. He then says, You can stop using the flashlight. The darker it is, the easier it is to find. Some kind of mutant appears in the background, and we see its paw behind them. After digging for a while, he notices a glow and says, That light. He starts digging faster, and finally, he finds the key. I found it, just as I thought. The dungeon key. I finally found you, she thinks. It took so long, but look how happy happy you are. Just as she says this, something comes from her side and grabs her. We realize it's the tongue of a mutant monster, pulling the hot policewoman into its mouth. She notices and thinks she's about to be devoured, but the protag appears and quickly cuts off the monster's tongue. He continues attacking the creature and activates a skill, saying, good thing I powered up beforehand. She screams, oh my god, a mutant lizard? It's so big. The mutant lizard prepares to attack and he dodges, obviously. Then we see the dog, yellow pill, charge at the lizard, biting its claws. The lizard watches, and we see the protag rushing towards it, delivering a powerful blow to its eye, causing blood to gush out. Fighting such a huge monster has left me exhausted, he says, and then he starts taunting the monster. Come here. The mutant lizard charges at him. As it goes after him, yellow pill runs in front of him, and he yells, why did you come here? Quick, dodge. The dog stays, waiting for the monster to approach, and the protag shouts again, hurry, get out of the way. They keep fighting each other, and the MC is getting worried. The lizard strikes, hitting Pill's jar, sending him flying. As the dog is thrown into the air, the lizard strikes again with its tail, sending Pilula crashing to the ground. The hot policewoman watches as Pilula falls, weak, and waiting for the monster to attack again. The creature prepares its claws to strike, but the protag runs in, defending and saving the dog. He's thrown aside, and the lizard prepares to attack Pill again. Suddenly, we see a sharp stake pierce through the monster's head. The blow was delivered by the hot policewoman who saved Pill. She watches as the monster falls to the ground. The protag sits down, exhausted, saying, As expected of a policewoman, she's fierce. She looks at him, while Pill runs to him. Pill, even though you're just a dog, you were so brave. Good job. The dog, excited, starts licking him, and he says, Stop licking me. It's so sticky. In the background, we see the shadow of two people, but they quickly disappear. The protag then looks at the lizard and pulls out a knife, beginning to examine its skull. The policewoman asks, What are you doing? He pulls something out and shows her, Take a look at this. This is the most important resource in the apocalyptic world. A magic crystal. She examines it. Magic crystal? This thing contains magic? It's similar to that, but even more incredible than magic. What does it do? She asks, curious. Are you interested? Yes, I'm interested. Tell me more. He makes an offer. But first, you have to agree to my conditions. No, that's not happening, she says, thinking. Does he dare ask a policewoman to agree to his terms? I can investigate and discover the secret of this crystal on my own. I don't need his help. The protag realizes, not all girls are like the ones I've dealt with before. And then we see the hot girls, just how the viewers like them. She starts to leave, saying, Okay, now that you found your key, I guess I'll be going. He responds, Our friendship ends like this? Actually, I have a request, she says. Go ahead. As you can see, the current situation is so sinister. The environment is chaotic, and there are many villains. Why don't we team up? That way, we can take care of each other. She thinks for a moment while he lowers his head, and Pill consoles him. He wonders, Why am I suddenly being so humble? She analyzes him, and then says, Okay, even though your actions are extreme, I don't think you're a bad person. 
I guess it's fine. She extends her hand. He introduces himself. I'm Yi Zhong Ming. She replies, My name is Mo Ye. As they introduce themselves, two guys show up. Hey, you there. Stop right now. One of them points a gun and says, If you want to live, put your hands up. The other comes up behind him, covering his mouth and saying, Hey, calm down. Don't make any sudden moves. Don't say those words. The hot policewoman asks, Who are they? Protag answers, They're criminals. He grabs his gun and says, Die. They start arguing about something and the policewoman draws her knife saying, You son of a bitch! You killed two of our brothers! We're going to make you pay for that! Suddenly, the guy behind notices that his friend didn't remove the safety. He asks, What's a safety? I'm not a guard. I've never seen a real gun before. How do I unlock it? He says, Have you ever seen war movies with guns? The safety catch is to prevent the weapon from firing and causing harm to innocents. Are you an idiot? If you don't know how to use a gun, why didn't you tell me before? Give it to me. So, while he was teaching how to unlock the gun, the pill charges towards them, and they are startled, wondering what it was. He bites the guy's hand, who gets scared and asks his friend for help. The other one, trembling, starts saying, He was bitten by a zombie and now he's doomed! Just as he's distracted, the hot cop sneaks up behind him, ready to throw a solid elbow strike right at his face. As soon as she lands it, she grabs him again, preparing for a judo move, pulling him over her shoulder and slamming him hard on the ground. And that's how it shows she's a badass. Our protag, watching all this skill, says, Such incredible martial arts, I'd better not mess with her in the future. So, with both of them tied up, he starts asking, Hey, who sent you? He replies, It was fifth brother, but could you help stop the bleeding? If you don't want me to die from it? If you don't want to die from the bleeding, then first tell me about fifth brother. Fifth brother? We cut back to where the fifth brother is, and one of them says, Fifth brother, are you hungry? Let's head back and eat first. Then he says, What's this talk about hunger? Get back to work. Fifth brother, why are we up all night digging into these zombies' heads? You know what this means, right? Looting. But aren't these drops like game equipment? Looks like junk to me, to be honest. Then he punches him in the head, making his eyes bulge out. Shut up. Keep working. These things don't just grow in zombies' heads for no reason, and there are many zombie heads out there. There must be a use I haven't figured out yet. Cut back to our girls lying down, and then we notice the traitor is already in elimination mode. She just keeps staring at the hot influencer. Then she prepares and gets up. We see the hot teacher drooling, and the traitor approaches our hot girl, just watching her with something in her hand. As she observes, she says, Chu Ying, using Ye Zhong Ming's name to intimidate me, trying to attack me while acting arrogant. Disgusting. I need to gather resources to help me survive. You'll die by my hand. Just as she says this, the hot teacher gets up and says, Lily, what are you doing? Noticing, she turns around nervously and says, No, I'm just going to the bathroom bathroom and starts heading there. She enters the bathroom, angry, saying, Why? The faucet is turned on, and she's washing her face. She looks at her reflection, saying, Why is she so naive? How can they all trust each other so easily? Then she hears a loud noise and starts to head back. We see the girls are already standing, wondering, What was that sound? Is someone trying to break down the door? Teacher, what's going on? The other one, holding the spear the protag gave her, says, It'll be fine. Zombies can't get in here. Then we see some object holding down the bottom of the gate and they realize it wasn't a zombie, but humans. And as we look at the gate, it's being forced open with even more strength. The traitor starts shouting, The door is going to be destroyed! And then we see the door open, and the whole gang's gathered. Well, 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 what do we have here? Pretty girls inside? They look and say, What are you planning? Then one of them approaches, saying, What do you think, pretty girl? The teacher, already scared, says, Don't come any closer. The guy with the long hair gets closer, saying, I like this teacher. And before we know it, they're already surrounded. Then we see the bald guy arriving and snatching the spear from her hands. Who are you? What are you planning? And then we hear the short-haired guy shout, That student with the short hair ran away! Hurry! Chase after her! Then, the long-haired one starts saying, Brother Dongzi, fifth brother told us to take out the guy but didn't say what to do with the girls. Fifth brother isn't here. I make the rules. Besides, these women are all with that bastard. Understood? Understood. Then the bald, fat guy says, I'll capture them. The other one yells, After capturing them, don't try to enjoy them alone. Back to the other, saying, Teacher, don't be scared. Don't you recognize me? The teacher, frightened, asks, Who are you? I'm a student who used to go to your school and I even attended your class. You're by. Then he cuts her off, saying, Teacher, my focus was all on this place. How could I study? And 
and as we see, they were all captured. Hey, take a look at this girl. She looks like that digital influencer. I think her name is Liang Chu Ying. I heard she was one of the top creators on OnlyFans. And when she realizes they recognized her, she starts crying. We cut back to those two filthy ones, still tied up while our dog is just watching over them. The hot cop starts saying, What's your next move? Since someone's trying to eliminate me, I'll just wait for them. This fifth brother has many brothers. Why don't we return to the police station plan and equip ourselves and then go after them? Mo Ye, stop daydreaming. It's all chaos now. Hiding and avoiding isn't my style. I'm going straight to their base. And so he walks off with the dog. She keeps looking, saying, All right, I'll go with you. We can watch each other's backs. Oh, and what's that key for? Then he explains that the key is to open a dungeon in the future. Open in the future. You've seen the zombies too. The monsters, the crystals, the world has changed. It's beyond your imagination. Yes, this is beyond my imagination. So, when can we use this key? He finishes by saying, when we're strong enough. Cut to the bald, fat guy, chasing after the traitor. Stop right there, and she keeps running. Wait until I catch you, and I'll cut your limbs into four parts so you'll never run again. When she realizes, it was a dead end. A dead end. Why isn't this door open? And when she turns, the bald, fat guy is already there. Some of you may be happy that this traitor is finally going to meet her end. Run. Run faster. Every time girls see me, they hate me. Call me crazy, avoid, and run from me. But now it's the apocalypse. I finally have the chance to make you all mine. She starts trying to negotiate with him. I won't abandon you. I won't ridicule you. Then he says, but why should I trust you? I'm different from those other girls. I'm just a student. With a look that's impossible to fool anyone, she puts his hand on her chest saying, Big brother, you're not gross at all. You're very handsome. If you're willing to let me go, I'll do anything you want. Just the two of us. He grabs the traitor saying, You seem normal and you talk well, but I can't betray brother Dong Z. Come with me and let's go back to see brother Dong Z. Then she realizes it's too late. Leave me alone. I'll die if I go back. I'm with you. No way I'll let you die. Don't waste time. Let's go fast. And as we see, she's still holding that glass in her hands. Then the fat guy says, Brother Dong Z, I'm back. And when she realizes, that's... Then we see that our hot teacher had her clothes all torn. But luckily, they hadn't done anything to her yet. Wow, so violent they tore her clothes. This teacher is really beautiful. She runs towards the teacher, worried. The bald fat guy starts pointing at her. Brother Dong Z, this girl followed me back. Then he cuts in, saying, Why? She wants to join us. Join us? This girl is definitely smart. She knows how to switch sides. Interesting. Is that how things are now, huh? I don't dare to hide anything from you. Hey, stop crying. Come here quickly. Then she approaches. Hurry up. Now greet Brother Dong Z. Brother. Hello, Brother Dong Z. Girl, do you want to join us? Yes, Brother Dong Z. Please accept me. I'll do anything you command. Sure, sure. Now prove it to me. She's your friend, right? Go over there and hit her. The girl starts shouting, You traitor! Ye Jong Ming saved you and this is what you do to us. So the traitor slaps her again, making it two to one for the traitor. You monster. The other one, just enjoying it, says, I heard she's an online celebrity. I like playing with these whores. The harder and rougher, the better. Then, when we realize it, the traitor is already furious. Don't worry, Brother Dong Z. I have a grudge against this girl. Earlier, she dared to slap me. That bitch. So she grabs her hair while the two just watch. Our hot teacher grits her teeth while she watches the betrayed one. She angrily approaches, saying, Your face just makes me even more angry. The guy in the back starts speaking, Enough. You're approved. You're fit to join us. Then the bald fat guy gets the news that she was now his woman. Woohoo. He celebrates with joy. Oh, Brother Dong Z, I understand. Thank you so much. Then he comes over and hugs her. Brother Dong Z has recognized you. Now you're my woman. And so we see that she was very happy. Then he calls the brothers to come closer, saying he had something to share. Brothers, come here. I have something to tell you. Then they gather around. We were all allies of fourth brother. But after fourth brother became a zombie, we were forced to join fifth brother and become his allies. Then the mustached guy says, fourth brother was part of the axe gang. He knew martial arts, but fifth brother is just a mess. He's worth nothing. And the other one, gritting his teeth, also says, fifth brother is very cunning. The things we risked our lives for, he took them all. And so we see that they're all revolting, being manipulated by Dong Zi. Something's about to happen.
The bandana guy starts exploring and opens the door. He begins to say, Brother Dong Zi, there's no one in the cafeteria. It looks like he hasn't returned yet. He starts to walk in, saying, This is a perfect opportunity. Let's go in and plan our ambush. Let's wait for him to come back. But out of nowhere, a bone hits him square in the face. Noticing that he was hit, he starts to say, Damn, who threw this bone at me? Then we see that our protagonist was holding the bone while eating with the hottie. Hey, I just finished eating, and you you guys are back. Looks like our luck is pretty good. Then he looks and says, Chicken bone? Wait a second. Did he eat the chicken we had saved? Damn. Could it be that Lao Wu, Long Dao and the others failed? Your two brothers who tried to kill me were killed by me. And now, it's your turn. The bandana guy at the back starts shouting, Arrogant kid! Brother Dong Zi, let us take him out. Dong Zi, just watching, says, No rush, go. Bring him here. Then the other guy starts to say, Brother Dong Zi, I brought someone here. Then we see the hottie who has been brought to them. Great, kid, come take a look. This is your comrade, right? The hot police officer starts to see what's happening and says, You've taken a hostage? What a bunch of despicable people. Dong Zi asks, Wasn't she really arrogant before? Now that I've got a woman in my hands? Are you scared now? This girl is an online celebrity so the price I'll charge won't be cheap. Our protag, holding a knife, begins to say, too bad, but I don't have that kind of relationship with her. Furious, he says, still acting arrogant, huh? I saw you two moving together. The protagonist replies, we're just using each other. We realize it wasn't even a knife, but something sharp, like a steel pipe. Then he rushes forward with a huge bloodlust and stabs the guy, making blood splatter everywhere. The guy feels intense pain. Dongzi, screaming as blood drips. You dare to hurt me? Are you looking for death? Brothers, attack him all together and finish him off. He points, and his comrades start running toward the protagonist. The first one rushes and tries to throw a punch. The MC dodges, and as he does, he prepares a punch and lands it squarely. Then, the others start surrounding him. He stands, watching, observing all around. Then he calls them all out. Come on, bring it on, you bunch of arrogant trash. Then another guy comes with brass knuckles and says, Take this. The protag easily dodges. He grabs the guy's arm, pulls it back, and breaks it. The guy falls to the ground, writhing in pain, while another one grabs him from behind, saying, I've got him! As soon as he grabs him, Ye grabs him by the head and throws his body forward with full force, smashing him completely on the ground. The other guy watches in fear. After the beating, the bald, fat guy appears. Come on, you trash, move! Our protagonist notices he's holding a knife. As the fat guy goes to attack, the MC punches him in the side of the ribs. Thinking nothing would happen, the fat guy smiles and tries to cut the protagonist at the same moment. But the MC dodges in the blink of an eye and uses martial arts to disarm the fat guy, who drops the knife. Confused, Ye turns to the side and delivers a strong kick to the fat guy's head, knocking him to the ground. The other guy remains on the floor, begging for his life. Brother, you're really strong. Please have mercy. We see a cane, and someone begins to say, Fifth brother told us to get rid of you, but it seems these people people aren't enough to handle you, huh? So, how about… and… this teacher, is she your comrade too? If you dare to move, I'll take her head and smash it against the ground continuously. We then see our hot teacher all tied up, Yi observes, realizing the teacher was captured, and he starts pulling her by the hair while the traitor just stands there. I haven't even touched her yet because I was waiting for this opportunity to use her to threaten you. And there's also this girl here. But you don't want her to die, right? So if you don't want her to die, apologize now. The protagonist looks at him without showing any emotion while he keeps demanding he kneel and apologize. Suddenly, a brick hits him square in the face, making blood fly. It was the traitor. Don't touch my teacher. I don't care about anyone else, but only about the teacher who's been kind to me. Some time passes. Then they were all tied up together, and we see that the traitor was already there untying the teacher while crying. Teacher, I'm so glad you're okay. I was so worried. The teacher replies, I'm fine, Lily. Fortunately, you saved me. Then the hottie from OnlyFans starts pointing at her saying, You traitor! The hot police officer just thinks to herself, Are all these girls his friends? Wait, is he forming a harem? The traitor just looked back while the teacher kept talking about how the traitor did well in fighting against that villain. The hot police officer starts to say, She seems to have been humiliated. Why are you acting so arrogant? The digital influencer turns around angrily, saying, No way! Who 
are you? Didn't you see what she just did? Then the protagonist approaches, already saying, Hey, Lily saved Teacher Pooh, don't argue anymore. And we see that she gets a little sad. After feeling a bit down, she rushes toward him, grabbing him, asking why he had arrived so late and where he had gone. He starts calming her down, saying, It's okay, don't cry. The hot police officer crosses her arms and starts saying, This girl is really beautiful. The traitor kept watching, but for now, everything seemed fine. The scene cuts to the spinning wheel. Someone activated it, and when we realize it, it's those two again. One of them is already happy because they figured out that to make it spin, you just have to put in the crystals. The scar-faced guy, noticing this, is thrilled because he had several crystals in his hands to use. The pineapple-haired guy points, saying, Fifth brother, with this big stone, can we try our luck again? He smacks his head again, saying, Dude, shut up. And so, once again, they put in more crystals and hope for something good to drop. When they realize it, prize drops. We won a prize, fifth brother. We won a prize. The system beeps, saying he won a new profession. And the profession is alchemist trainer. The system continues. Profession successfully changed. You are now an alchemist trainer. He looks at his hand while saying, Profession? Alchemist trainer? Like a profession change in a game? Damn, I put in so much effort and all I got was an alchemist trainer? What use is that? Frustrated, he kicks his companion right in the balls. Go over there. That must be their HQ. Go see if you find anything useful. Okay, brother, don't kick me there. It's going to swell. Damn, I put in so much effort to get those 20 crystals, and now they're all used up. Law Wu didn't know the number of crystals he could put in, nor did he know that the amount he had already exceeded the number needed for the draw. The excess amount won't be released by the wheel, and during the next lucky draw, the person only needs to put in the remaining amount of crystals to start the draw. Then he comes back with that bag. Fifth brother, I found a bag. This must be that woman's bag. It looks full of stuff. There must be a lot of good things in here. Let me see. A rope? some biscuits, canned food, a first aid kit. Why is all this junk in here? Then he notices something and starts reading. Beginner level, body strengthening medicine. Capable of increasing the consumer's physical and strength levels. Can upgrade to a one star warrior. Side effect, the person will feel pain and muscle aches. Some may die because they can't withstand the strengthening. Noticing this, he gets excited. Oh, so this is a body strengthening medicine? Hmm, very good. The other, realizing, says, body strengthening medicine? Fifth brother, how do you know this is medicine? He looks at him and starts thinking, huh, can't he see this? The words are floating right here in front of me. Then it dawns on him and he thinks, is it because I got the alchemist profession? I can see the medicine, its description, and functions. He activates his ability again, looking at the bottle. The system says, some people can handle the strengthening. That boy must have drunk this potion to fight and defeat so many zombies. I might die from drinking this, but without risk, there's no gain. He removes the cap and starts drinking. The other guy, noticing, says, Oh my god, fifth brother, is that drinkable? Be careful, you might get sick from that. As soon as he drinks, the effect begins to spread throughout his body. He starts screaming and writhing in pain, his eyes sparking and veins bulging. He continues to feel the pain as the suck up asks, Fifth brother, what's wrong with you? Fifth brother, the guy starts running, saying, I'm going to get help. Just as he goes to leave, a huge fist tries to crush his head. What is that? When we realize it, a large mutant monster appears in front of him. The mutant monster comes at him, trying to kill him. He closes his eyes, thinking it's the end. When he opens them, he sees that Fifth Brother has blocked the monster's punch with just one hand. Fifth Brother, you saved me, are you okay? Fifth Brother responds, I'm stronger than ever now. So this is the strength of a one-star warrior, huh? Come, let me try using my full power. The scene cuts back to the house of the first hot girl. Yeah points out, we're here. That's the place, our temporary base. You can rest and put your things down there. Take a seat, I'll go look for Mu Fei. He starts climbing the stairs, thinking about how the storage of Fifth Brother's crew is all theirs now, and how this time the loot wasn't bad. He keeps going up, calling for Mu Fei. I'm back, Mu Fei. Mu Fei, where did she go? He searches around. Suddenly, someone shouts, Ye Chongming, come here, look at this. He runs over to the kitchen. When we see it, kitchen is a mess. This is the kitchen. What happened here? Then we notice a letter left in the middle of the fridge, and next to it, a bloody handprint. He grabs the letter and realizes it's a message, telling him to go to the supermarket. Damn. Was this left by Mu Fei? Back to the mutant zombie. It's been defeated. The suck-up is thrilled. Fifth 
brother, you were amazing. He smiles, now realizing the strength he has. Now I've got real power too. The other one, quietly sitting in his corner, says, Fifth brother, you're so strong. We won't have to fear zombies anymore. Fifth brother replies seriously, Afraid of what? From now on, zombies are my prey. Yes, fifth brother, you're incredible. Fifth brother tells them to head back now to find Dongzi and the others. As they approach the place, the suckup says, Fifth brother, brother Dongzi and the others probably haven't returned. If they had, they would have left by now. Then they notice something. What? What's going on here? When we look, they're tied up. One of them starts waking up and says, Fifth brother, you're finally back? That bastard you wanted us to kill, he eliminated our brother Dong Zi, and he stole our stuff too. Hearing this, Fifth brother heads to the warehouse where they were. When he opens it, he realizes everything's gone. He gets furious, saying he'll personally put an end to that bastard. He grips the steel door tightly, crushing it with all his strength, and says, I'll torture you until you beg for mercy, then I'll tear you to pieces, you son of a bitch. Out of nowhere, our protagonist gets a sudden chill and feels uneasy. The hot girl asks, what happened? Why did you change all of a sudden? He replies, nothing happened. I just have a bad feeling. We see that he's now surrounded by the girls. The harem is forming, my friends. The hot cop arrives with a cheese sandwich and says, here, eat something and rest. What's the plan next? The hot teacher says, I made some warm tea for you. He begins explaining, my companion Mu Xin Fei. She must have run into some danger and left that information about the wheel behind. We need to hurry and prepare to find that wheel at the supermarket. Then, the OnlyFans girl, a bit disappointed, asks, is Mu Xin Fei your girlfriend? He says, no, she's just my companion. She lights up, saying, then I'll follow you and help find her. She thinks to herself that it's good he doesn't have a girlfriend, so she can keep following him and helping. He puts his hand on his forehead, saying, all right, just don't get in the way of my operation. As a team, you must have some usefulness. In this temporary team, Lian Chu Yin is smart and loyal to him, so she can help. Mu Ye is skilled in close combat, and she's a calm fighter, the best choice for him in team combat. But what about the teacher Mu Xu Yin? Mr. Ye, can I come with you? I'm a health teacher. I know some medical techniques and treatments too. I can help support from the rear. He replies, all right, just don't be a burden. We don't have extra strength to protect you. Then he looks at the hot cop and asks, and you, coming along? She looks at him and says, of course, let's go, comrade. So guys, our harem is officially formed. He sees all the equipment already set aside, this time to find Mu Xin Fei and the new wheel. He asks how long it'll take, noting that the food can only last a few days. Even though we have a lot of stuff, we can't bring too much. He calls the hot cop over and starts explaining, we'll bring this first, then we'll come back for the rest. She says, leaving here isn't safe, but I have a way. The protagonist is impressed when we realize there's already a truck outside. She approaches it and points. This is the best vehicle from the police depot. Our chief went to great lengths to transport it. He says, incredible. This army van has armored defense. It can switch to climbing mode and its maximum load is 33 tons. It can reach up to 87 kilometers per hour, but too bad it doesn't have missiles. He adds, it's good enough. Don't worry. He starts complimenting her, saying that this van will be a great help and she's all happy. We cut back to those two scumbags. Fifth brother, where are we going? To find that kid's base, of course. I want to put an end to that guy. He grabs a machete and starts getting ready. Brother, what about the others? I never thought Dong Zi and that bunch of trash would try to betray me. Let them leave on their own. We see he left them behind, calling for help. He licks his machete and says, Bastard, we only need one predator to hunt zombies and that person is me. Then we return to the truck scene. They were already inside. The MC, all happy, says, Not bad. With this vehicle, it's much safer to face the zombies. And she starts to speak. Of course, in front of the army van, dealing with these zombies is like crushing a piece of cake. And so, we see the truck continuing to plow through the zombies, smashing all of them. The teacher says, thanks to Mo Ye, we finally have a vehicle. As expected from a great policewoman, she's much more capable than us regular people. Meanwhile, the other girl is quietly fuming in the corner. She's jealous, watching the close bond the hot policewoman has with Ye Jong Ming. Mo Ye, that policewoman also likes to take credit, huh? It's crazy. I wish I could be useful too. The protagonist says, Mu Xin Fei didn't specify the exact location. We can only check them one by one. After passing through here, there'll be a supermarket. Let's check there first. 
Then the hot policewoman, noticing something, says, Ye Jong Ming, look outside. When he looks, he says, What? Why are there so many zombies? The zombies were already surrounding the truck as he spoke. They don't seem to be chasing us. It looks like they're trying to escape from something. Then the hot woman, realizing something, says, Look over there. It seems like something's coming. And as we look, we see a shadow rushing toward them. It's something that looks like a mutant gorilla. The gorilla starts to roar, and when it sees the zombies in front, it begins grabbing them one by one, devouring them. It's eating zombies. Damn, it's a mutant white ape, a fierce beast that evolved. It's very strong, relentless, and cruel. With my stage one warrior combat skills, I'm probably no match for it, but in my previous life, I fought it before, so I know its weak points. The mutant ape charges toward the truck with all its might. The MC, realizing this, says, Damn, it noticed us. Hold on tight. And so they start to reverse. The mutant ape just watches from behind. Suddenly, when they least expect it, the truck crashes hard. He realizes it and says, Damn, I hit the traffic light. I'm so unlucky. The ape quickly jumps onto the truck, landing right in front smashing into the truck's cabin with full force. The hot women scream, feeling the impact of its strength, while he just watches. The mutant ape was already staring at him with its menacing gaze. He gets ready to swerve the truck, trying to shake the mutant ape off by swerving it from side to side. He calls the hot policewoman, saying this was a problem and that she should drive now. She looks confused, but he opens the truck door and gets out. Then he looks at the ape and delivers a hard kick to its face, sending the ape flying far away with the force he used. Just when he least expects it, the mutant ape's tail wraps around his leg. Looking at the ape's tail, he realizes it's made of steel, and with the force of his kick, he too is pulled away, crashing to the ground with a strong impact. The truck starts to speed away, and when we notice, he's already crushed to the ground with the hot policewoman watching from a distance. Ye Jong Ming! The mutant ape begins to rise and watches him. It approaches the protagonist, mocking him. It gives a mighty roar, showing who's in charge. And with that, it finishes off our protagonist with a powerful blow. As soon as it strikes him, several gunshots start firing at it. It looks for who's shooting and realizes it's our hot policewoman. The ape roars and charges at her while she tries to shoot, and it dodges every shot. It approaches her, and as we notice, it tries to land a heavy hit on her, but she dodges. The hot teacher starts screaming as the ape's paw smashes through the glass. They're terrified, realizing it's no longer chasing Ye but is after the hot policewoman. The monster circles the car while she hides. As it gets closer, she starts shooting rapidly, and as the bullets hit it, the ape roars even louder. It prepares to crush her, and she notices. She leaps away just in time to dodge the attack. The ape, growling angrily, lets out a huge scream. It grabs the truck with all its strength. Inside the vehicle, they scream, realizing the van is about to flip over. Then we see the hot teacher getting thrown out of the van. When the mutant ape notices, it charges toward her with its hand raised, and with that, it lands a powerful blow. We see the hot teacher's back get hit, leaving her badly injured on the ground, blood spilling everywhere. As the ape just watches her, she's trembling in pain. The other girl cries out, No, stop! She grabs the ape's attention attention and when it notices her, it prepares to attack. Suddenly, the protagonist calls out to distract it. As we see, our little dog is already beside him. The pup starts running toward the ape at full speed. The mutant ape tries to strike the pup, but it dodges skillfully, climbing up its arms. The dog opens its mouth and attacks the ape brutally. The ape tries to shake it off, moving swiftly to throw it off balance. But the protag calls out, Moo yeah! Toss me the gun now! She quickly grabs the gun and throws it to him. He catches it and instantly activates his technique enhancement, boosting his abilities. The mutant ape is still growling when the pup knocks it down to the ground. But without delay, the ape lands a hit, sending the dog flying. It gets back up, filled with rage, preparing to deliver a final blow to the pup. Then our MC yells, Hey, you white-haired piece of shit! The ape looks over and realizes the protagonist is aiming the gun at him. He thinks to himself, I know where your weak spot is. And so he shoots, hitting the spot that is his weak point. His weak point is right here. As soon as it hits, the monster makes a strange face and falls dead to the ground. This kind of mutated and enhanced muscle forces the bones at the back to be exposed, making his spine his weak point. Then, he looks at the gun. Thanks to the enhancement technique, it increased the power of the bullet. He keeps thinking that even after enhancing it, it's
it still wasn't enough. It seems I still need to develop all five of the crafting skill techniques. And with that, he finishes, saying he's satisfied. Then, we return to the car, and someone is screaming, saying it hurts. We see our hot teacher being taken care of. The wound is really deep. I'm going to use alcohol to disinfect it, Professor Pooh. Hang in there. Suddenly, our protag, hearing someone screaming, quickly opens the door. I heard someone screaming. Are you all okay? And when we notice, our teacher is just how the subscribers like her. She starts screaming, Yi Zhong Ming, close the door, get out of here. He closes the door, all embarrassed, saying, sorry. Then the hot policewoman approaches and says, how is Professor Pooh? He replies, medicine is being applied. It's just a scratch, not life-threatening. He keeps thinking, after experiencing so much, suddenly seeing a scene like this, I still can't accept it. He approaches the dog and says, Pill, thank you for your hard work. Good job. Fortunately, the injury isn't serious and won't affect your movement. After the mutation, the recovery will be slow. I need to find some medicine to speed up the process. He pets the dog, saying, Pill, wait for me. I'll heal you for sure. And then, when we notice, birds are already coming, ready to eat the remains of that creature. The OnlyFans creator approaches, saying that it looks like Professor Pooh's wound is really deep and it keeps bleeding. The other girl adds, this kind of large wound needs stitches but we don't have tools or anesthesia. So he starts saying, I can use my crafting skill to make a stitching tool. Then he starts thinking, remembering the past. Sewing without anesthesia would be, in my past life I tried before but surely Professor Pooh probably couldn't handle such torture. He starts to leave, saying, the yellow pill is also injured. There's a private territory nearby with all sorts of medicine that can be used for surgery. We can search for these resources. Then she starts thinking, and what about that supermarket and your friend? He replies, Mo Shin Fei is very smart. I believe she'll protect herself. You don't need to worry too much because she's a nine-star veteran in the future. And so, we see Mo Shin Fei fully equipped. I trust she won't just die here. The hot policewoman approaches and says, but just to be safe, we should split up. You'll take Professor Pooh to look for medicine. I'll check out the nearby supermarket just to verify. I won't do anything else, so don't worry. He says, no, we don't know what kind of mutant monster is on this street. She punches forward lightly, saying, hey, don't underestimate me. I'm a cop. My combat skills and experience. Haven't you seen them before? Don't you trust me? He just stays silent, watching her. She continues. News. Don't worry, public officers do what they say. And with that, she finishes, giving a thumbs up. He smiles, saying, All right then, be careful. But remember, the wheel attracts zombies, so some zombies will unconsciously move toward the wheel. Be careful. She confirms, saying, Roger that. Then, as he walks, he starts thinking, I was betrayed by my teammate in my last life. I hope in this life I... And so, the scene shifts to someone riding a bike. It's those two again. Scar grabs the other's head and says, On a bike, it's much faster. With the wind blowing hard, it speeds him up even more. The other one asks, brother, where are we going? After my perfect calculation, that kid must be looking for something. That means he'll certainly go to some kind of place. And so, today's video comes to an end, my friends. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below if you want the continuation of this story. See ya!